episode number 50. Hi, you're listening to the Careers Beyond Motherhood podcast with your host, Janine Esbrand. I'm here to help working mums like you to thrive in your careers and in motherhood. I share tips, strategies, and inspirational conversations with awesome women to help reduce the struggle in your juggle. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. It is awesome to be back with you again today, especially because we have reached episode 50 of the podcast. Now, when I first started podcasting, I wasn't sure how it was going to go, how long I was going to podcast for, and now we are 50 episodes in, and it's just awesome to have a look at the statistics and see where people are listening from. So we have listeners in Australia, in the States, in the UK, in Russia, in Germany, in Japan, like so many different places so it warms my heart to know that we have listeners from all over the world and so if you're a new listener thank you for joining us if you are a returning listener a long-time listener thank you for spending time with us on the podcast now we generally focus on speaking to individuals about their experiences with returning to work after becoming a mother we talk about their careers beyond motherhood i share tips and strategies for juggling everything because let's face it it's not easy and there are quite a few resources out there there's lots of books that have been released in the past few years to support mums in making the transition into life as a working mum i'm gonna name a few for you so the fifth trimester by lauren smith brody back to work after baby by laurie mahalik levin mother's work how to get a grip on mum guilt and make a smooth return by jessica chivers baby proof your career the secret to balancing work and family life so that you can enjoy it all by caroline flanagan and we actually interviewed caroline on episode 23 of the podcast if you want to head back and listen to that episode It can be really useful and inspiring to read these resources, get these tips and hear about the experiences of women from different backgrounds who have carved out their careers beyond motherhood. But on today's episode, I want to switch focus and talk about the other side of the working mum equation. And that is talking about the role of employers in making it possible for professional women to work in a way that works for them and their families. With the gender pay gap and gender equality being such hot topics, and rightly so, a lot more organisations are being intentional and thinking about the ways in which they can support their female talent pipeline. Um, There is a huge talent pool of highly skilled women who may have left the workforce for a time and then struggle to return at the same level and that is a real shame. It's a lot easier to retain good talent than it is to acquire new talent and so it is great when organisations are really thinking about preventative measures and thinking about how they can support their women who are transitioning back to work. Just to share a stat with you from a recent report by PwC where they shared that three in five women who are on a career break and return to work are likely to return to a lower skilled job. Now that statistic is high, way too high, because there are so many women, a huge talent pool of highly skilled women who have left the workforce for a time and then struggle to return at the same level. And so all of the time, effort, qualifications, experience that they have built up doesn't get the recognition that it needs to get and organizations are not able to benefit from the skill and expertise that they could bring to a role just because they've taken some time out and in the report they refer to that as a career break penalty and I think it's really a shame when it's likely that they took time out to raise a family and our future generation of workers that are going to contribute to the economy and to the workforce. There are many organisations that are setting a good example and today on the show we are going to speak to a few senior leaders who are going to share their best practices and some tips and ideas that you may well want to implement within your organisation or suggest to the leadership team at your organisation. I spoke to Elaine Carnegie from The Parent Effect about what she thinks organisations can be doing to better support their women coming back to work after a career break, whether that be maternity leave or an extended uh, career break. And so I want to share with you what she had to say. 
Hi, I'm Elaine Carnegie from The Parent Effect, and I'm here to share my view on how companies can better support their returning parents as they transition back into the workplace following an extended period of leave. So companies need to retain their working parents. Um, the talent that they have is immense. And not only from a perspective of keeping them within the organization, but uh, retaining their loyalty, their energy, their engagement, their motivation, um, and really retaining their career ambition um, and driving that talent within the organization all of which impacts the bottom line significantly and reduces the cost of replacing these individuals. So it is really, really crucial that organizations get this right. A few things that I think are, are, are vital to supporting returning parents. Uh, one is that when they announce the pregnancy or it, they announce that their partner is pregnant or that they're going through an adoption or surrogacy process, they need to have um, support from, from day one, uh, looking at you know, long-term career objectives and goals, uh, expectations, and also supporting the well-being element of of the, the 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 time leading up to them going off on leave, it should be very much a joint process for individuals and their managers. I I really strongly believe that managers have the biggest impact and can make the biggest difference when it comes to working parents. Um, and this is where organizations need to do more to support these managers uh, and to enable that support for the individuals. On return, um, they should be treated like new starts. A absolutely. I'll, essentially, they are new. They're coming back into the work place um, changed. They're changed. They have new perspectives. They have new priorities, new challenges, but they also have um, a whole new world of, of skills and attributes um, that will ultimately positively impact the organization. So that support needs to be a holistic program, so a return program. And I think the organizations that do have return programs in place have seen such an impact positively um, um, on the workplace and reducing the amount of employees that are leaving uh, because of, of um, feeling valued, empowered and supported as they return. Um, on that return, obviously, HR very much needs to be involved um, so that the individual can understand everything that's available to, to working parents. So policies, resources, um, you know, having that flexible working conversation um, and setting up a, a timeline uh, of goals and schedule. So at that point, as well as the program, there should be manager support from day one, very much present and, and very much key to how the program would be um, effective. Returners should be offered mentoring, coaching. Um, there should be networks, uh, even down to a WhatsApp group of um, peer support. Um, and then also the career aspect. So as I've said, these individuals are very much career driven. They're motivated, they're focused. They haven't lost that. Um, they're still a huge asset to the organization and so that their talent needs to be developed. Um, there needs to be discussion around role expectations and development plans and looking at concerns and just making sure that everything is tied in. Those are some really great suggestions. And whilst there may be a long way to go in terms of more organisations stepping up and creating that environment where women feel that they can go back and work in a way that works for them, there are many organisations that are leading the way and that are really doing great things in terms of creating an environment and a culture where people feel like they can ask for the flexibility that they need and get the support that they require so that they can continue to thrive and elevate themselves in their career post-motherhood. Saba is is one such organization and I spoke to the HR director Sarah Fern who shared with us what they do and their approach to supporting their women. At Saba we are creating a culture of talent development. We focus on output and trust. We encourage our people to think creatively when it comes to managing work and home life. Ongoing communication and transparency is part of our DNA and we check in with our people regularly on how they're doing and how we can help them. It's very much a partnership and communication and transparency is at the heart of that. We appreciate one size does not fit all 
and they take time to talk, ask questions and work together to find the best solutions. As a software company with global operations, flexibility has always been big for us. I believe that when we can show that something is working well and we can show that the business continues to flourish and grow and we have the right culture and support in place for individuals to bring their best, then it's a win-win for everyone. Buy-in from people you work with and trust is really important. If you can show that something is working well, it makes the case easier. It's refreshing to see how Saba is focused on the individual and how their approach is affecting the individual. Often organisations might put a policy in place and tick the box, but that policy may not be implemented effectively or really be serving the people that it was set up to serve. So it's great to have that individualistic approach and really consider what's working for your team members. Now, the legal industry often gets a bad rap in terms of its approach to flexible working and offering women different alternatives to their traditional way of working. So I'm pleased that I was able to speak to Jonathan Achampong from Wedlake Bell. And Wedlake Bell is an award-winning firm that has been doing great things in terms of gender diversity and actually has um, a great representation of women at partnership level within their firm. So Jonathan shares with us some of the initiatives that they have in place and the approaches that they take to agile working and flexible working that really allow their employees to work in a way that works for them, but still deliver excellent results for their clients. So let's hear from Jonathan. There are, I guess, a number of things we try to do to support employees returning to work after a career break. One thing we recognise is that flexible working can be an extremely helpful way to help employees. Because, you know, we all have lives outside of the office and trying to juggle commitments at home and at work can sometimes be a challenge. So having the ability to start and finish work at more flexible times and to work from home those things can be very helpful and, in fact, sometimes invaluable. Another thing we try to support employees with is agile working. And by that, I mean we encourage employees to work where, when and how they choose. You know, it's not necessarily about being in the office for the sake of being in the office. Although we operate from very modern and pleasant offices in the St Paul's area, and I personally enjoy coming into the office, and I, I know that many of my colleagues feel the same way, including ones returning to work after a career break. But whether you're in the office or in another location, the important thing is doing the things you need to get done, delivering the requisite levels of service to our clients. And thankfully, we have the infrastructure and legal tech that enables us to do this in an agile way. Another thing we recognize is that when the need or desire has arisen to take a career break, it's important for people to have the necessary amount of time out of the office and to return to work at the right pace and at the right time. So we have things in place like enhanced maternity pay, enhanced shared parental pay. You now we encourage employees and partners to utilize keeping in touch days. We try to, to keep the door open for team members to attend social or corporate events or, or simply just to pop in and say hi. And especially after um, mothers have had children, fathers have had children, having them pop into the office with their little one is great. Shout out to my colleague Jade, who popped in with her little son earlier today. It was great to see them both. In terms of how easy was it for us to introduce this support? Well, I would say some things have been driven by legislative changes. Some things have been facilitated by technological advances. But generally speaking, the support mechanisms we have in place have, have developed and evolved organically over time, normally in response to the needs of our employees and partners. So certainly in relation to the topic of people returning to work after career breaks, and in particular mothers returning to work after having children, I think we're on the right track. As always, though, there's, there's, you know, there's no time for complacency and 
we're, we're not perfect, so there's always more that can be done. But what's particularly exciting at this time um, at Wed Lake Bell is that we have a number of ideas, initiatives, and plans in place to help us to improve um, even further, um, to help and assist employees in their return to work after a career break. I really like how Jonathan and his team and his firm are embracing the resources that we have. So the technology that we have in this day and age really allows us to work in a way that we weren't able to work in previously. And so taking that on board and embracing it so that it works for everybody is a really, really good approach. So more firms and organisations should consider how technology can really work for them and how they can challenge the way that they've always done things and do things in a different way. Now, there's there's lots and lots of organisations that are doing great things. Head back to episode 42 and hear how Alan Reid and his team at Hybrid Legal are challenging the conventional ways of delivering legal services so that they can do so in a more flexible manner. You can also listen to episode 39 of the podcast where I interview Beth Gray, who runs a small practice and she talks about how she runs her practice in a flexible way so accommodates a lot of working mums within her team. It's really great to hear from leaders within different organisations about how they are approaching things and I hope that that's given you some ideas and some food for thought as to how you as an individual can make some suggestions within your organisation or if you are in a leadership role within your organisation how you can take some of these tried and tested ways and implement them into your strategy for the coming year. And if you are looking for some support around this in in terms of developing programs and support and coaching for your people, then do reach out because we help organisations to support their female talent pipeline and to really put things in place that are going to be impactful and make a difference to their team. So if you want to arrange a call, then head over to lightboxcoaching.com forward slash call. I'd be happy to have a chat about how we can support you and your team going forward. Okay, that brings me to the end of today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed listening and hearing from different senior leaders about their approach to accommodating women who want to build careers that they love whilst raising a family. If you'd like to connect with or learn more about anyone who was featured on today's episode, then head over to lightboxcoaching.com forward slash episode hyphen 50 and you can get their details on the show notes. All right, so I will be back again with you next week. In the meantime, I would love for you to go over and leave a rating and review so that more women just like you can find the show and join in the conversation. This brings us to the end of episode 50. I'm so excited to move into the next 50 episodes and I hope you'll stay with me on the journey. So make sure you subscribe so that you can get notified when the next episode goes live. Until next time, look after you and look after your babies. This podcast features music from Ben Sound.